We have all heard of the myths and the legends of our history. But is there another story? According to archaeology, the Great Pyramid was constructed by a pharaoh with the name of Cheops. Now, how do we know that Cheops was the, the constructor of the pyramid? Have you any inscriptions where he said, I did it? Do we have any sculptures? Do we have a mummy of Cheops? Nothing at all. 2,000 years ago, and even more, some of the historians at that time were in Egypt. For example, Diodorus Siculus, Strabon, Plutarch, Herodotus, they were all in Egypt roughly 2,000 years in the past. And they all were standing before the Great Pyramid. And they all asked the local priests there, who made this pyramid? And the local priest said, we don't know, because it was made before the Great Flood. So how do we come to the name of Cheops? Herodotus, the Greek historian, roughly 450 BC, he was for years in Egypt and he wrote two books about it. And in his two books, he makes clearly differences between the thing which he sees, which he smells, which he touches, and the things which are told to him. And in his second book of history, he says, someone told me that the Great Pyramid was constructed by a tyrant with the name of Khufu. Khufu is the Greek word for Cheops. It's the same figure. So, only because Herodotus has come up with this name of Khufu, Cheops, archaeologists said, oh, now we have a name. All true, all the other historians, 2,000 years and about, they say, no, it's wrong. Diodorus Siculus, who was a writer who published 43 books 2,000 years ago, historian book, he know the books of Herodotus, of his Greek colleague, and he said, no, Herodotus is wrong. It was not Cheops who made the Great Pyramid. It was a pharaoh with the name of Saurit. Saurit is the same figure which the Hebrew society calls Enoch. Here we are again. Enoch was the first man who disappeared in a fiery chariot from the earth. Enoch was the seventh patriarch before the Great Flood. Now, ancient Arabian writers you find the story, for example, in the book of Al Masudi or Ibrahim Abdul Al Makrisi. They said it was not Cheops, it was Saurit before the Great Flood. But Saurit is the same figure which the Hebrew call Enoch, and Enoch was before the Great Flood. We have a real problem with the Great Pyramid. You see, the building is composited roughly of about two and a half million stone blocks. Now, every technology needs a history. You have to learn how to move blocks, how to chisel them, how to cut them, how to transport them, etc. If we take uh, Cheops as the constructor of the pyramid, Cheops' father was Snorfu. His grandfather came directly out of Stone Age. They were no time, history, evolution of technology before the Great Pyramid. If we accept Enoch, yes, because Enoch was teached by the extraterrestrials in construction and all kinds of things. Now, we really have a problem. You see, technology, human technology, needs an evolution. We, for example, we, our forefathers, they learned that you need a, a stick so that you can hold the animal a certain distance. Later, they learned how a, a bow, a spear appears. They learned slowly that there are hard stones and soft stones that you can chisel. They learned evolution in technology. Now, the pyramid of so-called Cheops inside has different shafts and rooms. In the meantime, due to our modern, modern knowledge, we know there is at least one kilometer of shafts inside the Great Pyramid. That means planning. Planning means engineering design. You have to calculate. But Cheops, father, Stone Age people, there was no time for evolution of technology for the planning of the engineers. So, if it was Enoch before the Great Flood, then it makes sense. Al-Makrisi, Ibrahim Abdul Al-Makrisi, an Arabian historian, says, 
that inside the pyramid and under the pyramid, there we would find thousands of books written by Enoch for the future of mankind. In our time, a grace to modern technology, we find always more rooms in the pyramid and under the pyramid. So we, we localize them. Now the critics may ask, okay, if we know what these rooms are in the pyramid, why don't we go there and open it? Because you cannot. The shafts which lead to the rooms are very small, about 14 centimeter on one side. So you cannot grab in there. It's not possible. You need modern technology to go in there. And this modern technology is used at the moment. In the Great Pyramid of Egypt, we have roughly three rooms. The upper room, they call the king's chamber. The lower room, they call the queen's chamber. Under the pyramid, in the rock, there's another room which they call the unfinished chamber. Now, in the so-called queen's chamber, which is the room in the middle, there are two holes in the walls, on the north side and on the south side. And some 25 years ago, one of my friends, a German engineer, his name is Rudolf Gantenbrink, he constructed a small robot. And he received the permission from the Department of Archaeology that he could climb with this robot in one of these shafts from the Queen's Chamber. According to archaeology, they were absolutely convinced that the shaft is only about eight meters long, and then it will end. They say it's just a symbolic shaft made that the soul of the pharaoh may disappear to the stars up there. So eight meter, archaeology said. Now, some 25 years ago, the robot of my friend Rudolf Gantenbrink entered into the south shaft, which begins in the Queen's Chamber. There were two meters first, and then he started climbing inside the pyramid. The robot climbed higher and higher. The eight meter was passed long away. The archaeologists could not understand what was going on. Always there were different sorts of stone. There were granite, there were alabaster, there was sandstone. Then always the robot passed some doorway, uh, the stones who looked like doors, climbing up more and more. Finally, 32 meter, 42 meter, 52 meter, and at 62 meter, the robot, because he had a camera, the robot, came to a little door. Absolute little, because it's only 14, 14 centimeters sideways on each side. So a little door, which had two bracelets, obviously two metallic bracelets. One of the metallic bracelets was broken down. They found it down on the, left, on, on the right side. So the robot had a laser and the laser went under the door. So we knew for sure behind this door, there must, there must be something more behind this door. So all this is roughly 25 years in the past. We heard about it in the press. Some uh, uh, sh stories were shown on television. What happened since then? What happened since the 25 years of the measuring robot of Rudolf Gantenbrink? A few years later, the American uh, National Geographic Society came also to Egypt and they have constructed a new robot. The new robot had a drill and with this they drilled a hole into what we look as a little door and they made an international television show. They said now for the first time they will put a camera through this hole so that the world's eyes could see what's behind the door. I'm sorry that was the next lie. The photographs they made already before the public, they knew exactly it was nothing behind this. It was empty. Otherwise, they would never have shown it to the world public. Anyhow, there was this first door with the hole. And uh, the laser made a measuring and about 22 centimeters uh, behind it, behind the first door, is another wall. Now, time passed, 18 years passed, and the rich man from Singapore came to the Department of uh, Antiquity and said he has a new possibility to destroy the wall. The first door, 20 centimeter, the second wall. He can destroy it by waves, by sound waves, etc. But they did not accept this suggestion, the Department of Antiquity. Finally, they gave him permission 
to make a very, very small hole into this wall, but only so small that you can pass through with an endoscope. You see, endoscope, with an endoscope, you go into your body. Now, of course, this small hole was drilled into the wall, and they put this camera of an endoscope through it. An endoscope made hundreds of photos. The computer put these photos together. And what's behind it? The next room. Again, that means technology. Technology means planning. You have to plan from the Queen's Chamber, these two walls, you have to pl plan these openings, because on both sides you can climb in with robot. 62 meter, you have to plan the room behind it. All this means, means engineering calculation, engineering design, and all this does not fit to the time of Cheops. Cheops was roughly 2,500 BC, a little more than Stone Age time. The evolution of technology was not ready for that. If Enoch was the constructor, then it would fit. All true Enoch is older than Cheops. Enoch was the seventh patriarch before the Great Flood. So even older, it doesn't matter, because Enoch was teached by the extraterrestrials. And he says in his books, they learned me all kinds of things, including construction and engineering things. So then it makes sense.